What's the chance that soon-to-be ex-husband will get final decision-making authority in a joint custody situation? That depends on many, many factors. Some legitimate, some possibly not. Those of you who have read my content here or watched my videos may have noticed that I am of the opinion arising out of more than 25 years experience as a divorce and family law attorney and the study of the subject in that same period of time that while the bias against men in divorce and child custody cases is less than it's ever been in recent history and continues to weaken, there is still a clear and undeniable bias against awarding fathers equal physical custody, to say nothing of awarding them sole physical custody of children. Why, you may ask, am I commenting on the subject of physical custody of children when your question asks what the odds a father has of winning sole custody, sole legal custody, or at least what is known as final decision-making authority, which is often a component of what is nominally joint legal custody, but is in reality sole custody. But I digress. Before we go any further, if you haven't figured out the distinction yet, there are two kinds of child custody physical custody, essentially how many overnights do the children spend with each parent, and legal custody, concisely stated, the power to make choices regarding the children's health, care, education, religious and moral upbringing, and overall welfare. I lead with how fathers are treated by courts when it comes to physical custody awards to highlight the contrast between the bias against men on the subject of physical custody and the generally far better treatment fathers receive when it comes to the courts making legal custody awards. Why is that? It's my opinion that courts are far more likely to award fathers joint legal custody for two main reasons. Number one, it's easy for courts to claim that mothers are or likely will be better physical caretakers of children than men generally, and in particular cases, than it is to claim that the judgment of women is so superior to that of men as to justify awarding sole decision-making power to the mothers. And two, Many courts feel as though awarding joint legal custody makes a nice booby prize for the father who fought for equal physical custody of his children but lost that battle. Okay, now that we have these preliminaries covered, we'll get to the specific question. What are the chances that a divorcing father has of being awarded final decision-making authority, i.e. essentially sole legal custody? Although there may still be some bias in some courts in some parts of the country against men when it comes to awarding legal custody, it has been my experience in my jurisdiction where I practice divorce and family law, Utah, that a father's odds of being awarded joint legal custody are better than even. In other words, as long as the father has not been shown to exercise poor judgment when it comes to his children, he will likely be awarded joint legal custody with the mother if he's seeking it. So for a father to be awarded sole legal custody of children, or at least final decision-making authority, a father would need to prove that the mother cannot be entrusted with joint legal custody and is not minimally fit to do so. He would have to do this by proving that she is lacking in good enough judgment when it comes to the children and or exercises her judgment in a way that leads to harming or neglecting the children's physical, educational, moral, emotional, and psychological needs, in a nutshell.